are told that as a woman you'll have pain when you have your period and I thought nothing of it. But nobody ever told me that that wasn't normal. It was stopping me from doing things, it was stopping me from walking, it was really uncomfortable. You can just wake up and just not have the energy to get out of bed or to want to cry or to just not handle things. I'm just trapped. I feel like a prisoner in my own body. It is a mystifying disease which can often take nearly a decade to diagnose, leaving its sufferers in excruciating and inexplicable pain and is the number one leading cause of infertility in women at their peak reproductive years. It is so hard to diagnose that it takes surgery to be sure. This mystifying disease is known as endometriosis. Endo means inside, mitra means uterus, and osis means disease. It affects 1 in every 10 women aged 15 to 44 with no known cause or preventable cure. Endometriosis is chronic, which causes women to face extreme pelvic pain that worsens during menstruation, causes excessive bleeding, and pain that stops them from even doing normal activities such as walking. The pain is a result of uterine tissue, that is tissue which is normally only found within the lining of the uterus, accumulating in other places in the body as well. Then, when the body sheds its uterine tissue each menstrual cycle, this extra tissue has nowhere to escape, leaving painful cysts and scar tissue between organs, and in some cases even fusing them together. Lesions can be found on the ovaries, fallopian tubes, bladder, bowel, and other organs inside the pelvic cavity. The surrounding tissue can also become irritated and form scar adhesions that binds organs together. The condition has no pathological cause. We understand the reason for its symptoms, being caused by endometrial tissue appearing on the ovaries or fallopian tubes. However, its inherent cause is still unknown. Some theorize a possible genetic link to the disease or an issue with blood or lymph node transport, or possibly an accumulation of other nearby cells growing into endometrial tissue outside the endometrium. Although several screening methods have been proposed and tested, none are completely accurate in identifying affected individuals. Some of the tools that are used for diagnosing endometriosis include physical examinations, imaging techniques like ultrasound or CT, through a bimanual exam, or laparoscopy. Serum markers have also been used which essentially measure disease activity and monitor improvement. And lastly, a biopsy can be done by removing a small piece of the endometrial tissue for laboratory testing. As there is no current cure available, most treatments center around minimizing symptoms. Contraceptive steroids, non-steroidal anti-inflammatory medications, and painkillers are common therapies. Some treatments aim to alter the levels of reproductive hormones, like estrogen and progesterone, to discourage development of endometriosis. Examples include the combined oral contraceptive pill, progestins, and GnRH analogs. However, these might not be helpful for women who want to get pregnant because they affect ovulation. Some might consider surgery to remove lesions, adhesions, and scar tissues, but the success rate may vary. Some of the lesions may also recur, and some pelvic abnormalities can further contribute to the chronic pelvic pain. Treatments for endometriosis-related fertility include surgical removal of tissue, ovarian stimulation, and in vitro fertilization, otherwise known as IVF. While it may seem like there's little hope, scientists have developed a new nanotechnology approach called magnetic hypothermia to remove the lesions from endometriosis. Led by Ole Tarachula of the Oregon State University College of Pharmacy, this research involves magnetic nanoparticles that are as small as one billionth of a meter. The study showed that when the nanoparticles were injected intravenously, they accumulated in the lesions, making them easier to see using imaging techniques such as MRI. After non-invasive exposure to an alternating magnetic field, the nanoparticles' temperatures uh, rises until the lesion can be removed with heat. Magnetic hypothermia was originally overlooked because most magnetic nanoparticles have low heating efficiency and can only get hot enough after being directly injected into the tissue, which is not a realistic approach for endometriosis. However, the researchers overcame this challenge by developing hexagonal-shaped nanoparticles that have more than six times the heating efficiency of conventional spherical nanoparticles when subjected to an alternating magnetic field. This study showed promising results, as magnetic hypothermia was successful in eradicating the diseased cells in mice using only one treatment. This approach is non-invasive, 
can be done without surgery, and is effective at identifying and removing lesions with little chance of recurrence. This approach may one day offer endometriosis sufferers a ray of hope, and with further advancement in research and clinical trials on endometriosis, we may finally begin to see the lives of those affected change for the better. New technologies and treatments, such as the one we've talked about, are coming about at a rapid pace, and with each new advancement, we get closer and closer to finding a cure. While we wait, we are to listen to those who are affected, hear their stories, validate, uplift, and support each other, and most importantly, express compassion and empathy in how we treat women in healthcare.